Hello, good people of YouTube. Welcome back to Comfy UI 101. This is gonna be, I guess, part 10, but have two or three other videos connected to this. And this is the first part on building a very basic pipeline. What you're looking at here is my setup for all-in-one models, unit models, and GGUF variations. And basically what I do here is just unselect these two if I want to use the all-in-one, I can set this up for Flux, SDXL, it doesn't matter. And let's say I want to use a GGUF, I just turn this off, turn on the GGUF, that's active, and I can run my workflow. But in today's video, we're just going to set this up, test it, make sure it works. And then the second video, we'll look at how to create a basic pipeline. So let's get started. So first off, let's double click and load up the load checkpoint node. So it should look like this. And this is gonna take care of our models that are all in one, SDXL, Flux, it doesn't matter. We'll put this aside for now. Next, we wanna take care of both our standard unit checkpoints and the GGUF versions. So let's double click. You can simply type in unit. We're going to set up the load diffusion model node and the unit loader GGUF. So we'll bring this guy in, we'll bring in the GGUF version. And as you know, to use these nodes, we need the dual clip loaders as well as the VAE. So we're gonna double click, type in dual clip loader. There we go, this will go with that one. And then we'll also get the GGUF version we're gonna double click and find the load VAE. Next, we're gonna use set and get nodes. I covered this in a previous video that wasn't necessarily part of the Comfy UI 101 series, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Let's start with the load checkpoint node. And basically the way this works, this comes from KJ nodes. It should have been one of the custom nodes that you installed. And it works pretty simply. You just gotta right click onto the node and you'll see add get and add set node. We're gonna select add set and we're gonna hold alt and duplicate three times or two times. And what these are are sort of like transmitters. It's gonna send the signal to the node it needs to connect to. So first let's take care of the model input and we're gonna call this AIO underscore model, basically meaning all-in-one model. And we're gonna do the same thing for clip and VAE. So AIO underscore clip. You don't have to put the underscore, I just do it by habit, AIO VAE. And then we're gonna connect it and you see it's gonna adopt the color of the node. This one's gonna turn yellow and this one's gonna turn red, okay? Now you can go ahead and close these for now and just line them up. We're going to do something else with these later, but we're going to do the same thing for all these nodes, okay? So once again, right click, set node, hold alt, duplicate these, but this time you want to call it something different. So in this case, I'm just going to call it unit model. Then we're going to go unit clip and you guessed it, unit VAE. We'll connect these, close them up. And we'll do the same for the unit version. So what I like to do in this case, technically these are still unit models. I'm just gonna call them GGUF model. You can put unit GGUF, basically the same thing. It's just the format is different. And we'll connect those up. So we have our model loaders here. And at this point, before we continue with the workflow, what we're gonna do is apply some switches so that later on you'll see that we can switch between any of these models depending on the workflow, right? So go ahead and double click, type in any, you should see any switch here. And we're also gonna duplicate these. And each one of these is gonna represent the model, the clip and the VAE. Any one of these we're going to rename to model. We'll rename this clip and then we'll rename this VAE. We probably shouldn't have closed these off yet. So let's open all these up. It's going to get a little messy, but don't worry, we're going to clean it up. So yeah, keep these open. My bad. I should have said to leave them open. It's getting ahead of myself. What we want to do is connect all three of the model variations to the model switch. 
And you could just connect it manually this way, but because we're using set and get nodes, we're going to continue with the same concept. And as we right click over the node, now we're going to select get. This acts as a receiver. We're going to hold alt and copy a couple more here. And now if we click on this area, you see that everything that we've set is now available in this dropdown. So I'm going to select AIO model, unit model, and then GGUF model. And then we're going to connect these to the switch. For this model output, we're going to right click and add a set node once again. And now we're just going to call this model. We'll connect that. And just to keep things consistent, we'll make this purple as well. Actually, it's blue <laughs> with this template. So what this does is that when we complete the workflow later on, the any switch is only going to use either the all-in-one unit or GGUF, depending on the workflow. Let's put this aside for now. Let's do the same thing for both clip and VAE. I'm going to speed it up in the edit, but it's basically the same thing. Okay, let's check your work. Your model section should look like this with the get nodes with your any switch in your set node here for models. For clip, you should have AIO clip, unit clip, GGUF clip, and a set clip called clip into the any switch. Same thing for the VAE, AIO VAE, unit VAE, GGUF VAE, a set node called VAE into the any switch. Now it's up to you how you want to arrange this section. I like to just keep them up top, but for the sake of my own OCD, I'm just going to change the shape. You can hit control all right click over one of them and I'm going to change this to box. What we want to do is group the different models. Go ahead and hold control drag and select everything here. We're going to right click and select add group for selected nodes. We've done this numerous times. We can go ahead and close these off. If you want, you can hide them behind the checkpoint because when you click on the checkpoint, it'll go to the back and then we can resize this. And for now, I'm going to do this. And then we want to call this AIO models. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the unit group. Right click, add group. Might as well rename it here, unit models. Should just be unit model, AIO model. Do some housekeeping and typically you want them to be roughly the same width. And you guessed it, we'll do the same thing for the GGUF versions. And now we have three nice little groups. Next, we're gonna double click and Type in fast. We're going to select fast groups bypasser. I'm going to change the shape and probably the color. We'll just make this one black. All right, now that we have this set up, before we go any further, it's always a good idea to test what we built here. Make sure it works. And we'll set it up where we can do both SDXL and Flux. So we're going to just set up our standard image generation here. And I'm going to go through this really quickly. So we're going to bring in our text encoder. And we can, again, hold Alt to duplicate it for the negative prompt. We definitely want to use LoRa's, so let's add that. Double click, search for Power LoRa Loader. We're going to add that. We're going to need our empty latent, so we'll search for empty latent. Now, I like the size picker, this one here. We'll leave that there for now. Let's bring in the K sampler and our VAE decode. Now at this point, I'm not too concerned about using set and get nodes for now. The only place we'll put them for now is here. So we're going to add two get nodes. We'll duplicate that one. And here we're going to select model, connect that. And then this one, we're going to select clip. We'll connect this clip 
to this clip for both positive and negative. And then we're going to connect model to model. And oh, we need flux guidance. So we'll just leave that at the top there for now. We're going to do a whole bunch of rearranging after the fact. So don't worry about it being all over the place. We're going to connect these here and conditioning negative. We'll grab the latent input, connect that. We'll scooch over here, latent to samples. VAE decode, we'll just use the add get node and select VAE. We'll connect that. Just leave that up top here. And for now, we'll just use a preview image node. We'll resize that just a bit. So we have our basic setup ready to go. Let's start with SDXL and I'm going to put in just a really simple prompt. Demonic Knight Warrior wearing Daedric armor. And then for the negative, we'll just put horror warped deformed. This is my usual go to negative prompt. Let's choose an SDXL checkpoint. I'll use, I don't know, Real Cartoon XL. Don't forget to turn these off. We're just going to use the all in one checkpoint. So now that we've switched it off, you see they're bypassed. And yeah, that should run. Let's click on run. We see it going through the checkpoint. It's green. Let's make sure everything else is green. Looks good to go. There we go. Awesome. Looks good. Now we're going to test out flux, but for this one, I'm going to use the Laura and let's try the regular unit. So we'll switch this on, turn the all in one off and the model. I'm just going to use FP eight weight type FP eight fast as always for your dual clip loader. Make sure this is on flux. All right. Oh, I totally forgot that. Uh, when you're using SDXL, you can actually change the guidance to zero. You can just use CFG normally. Okay. But since we're using flux now, change this to one, and then we'll just put this at 3.5 and I'm going to use the Laura. So we only have to do eight steps and that's the flux turbo alpha Laura. Let's change this to eight steps and we'll just change the scheduler to beta that's what I normally use for flux. Now I am recording. So flux does take longer. If it takes too long, I'm just going to stop the recording and come back when it's done. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it bogged down my system too much. So I had to turn it off. So as you can see here, success, not the best image in the world, but it works. Okay. Now that you know how to set this up, this will work for any of your workflows, control net, upscaling, whatever it is that you have. And make sure to check out part two, where we actually build that basic pipeline. If you happen to be new to Comfy UI, this is a series of videos. Make sure to check it out right here. Comfy UI 101. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.